Welcome back to Duke has Got Me TV. I'm Elaine Stenson. I'm joined in the studio now by Ian McCall, who's managing partner with First Geneva Global High Yield Fund. Ian, you're very welcome to the studio. Thank you, Elaine. So emerging markets had a tough year in 2013. 2014 is shaping up to being even more difficult for emerging markets. Factors for this include rising interest rates, political turmoil in some areas, and fears of a global economic slowdown. But how much of an impact did tapering have on on emerging markets? Well, it's, it's for certain had an important effect. Um, different segments of the emerging markets have been impacted in a different fashion. It's important to look at some um, stocks, bonds, and then within bonds, high yield and investment grade. Um, in the case of what's happened and where can we go with tapering, um, in summer we were at 160 you know, one yield of 1.6 on the 10-year Treasury. We're now up at, at the start of January, 3%. During the course of January, it went all the way back to 260. So there's been a month in January, we've had two extremes. The first week, there was euphoria, risk assets, stocks, bonds rallied quite dramatically. And then there was a number of data points that began to come out that began to concern people in addition to what was going on with tapering and prospective um, prospects for tapering. Um, so you saw, in fact, by the end of the month, the 10-year Treasury having rallied significantly. Safe havens rallied throughout the month. Risk assets really had a dramatic reversal. Tapering was a big part of that, but probably the most significant factor at work was concerns about growth or the lack of or sustainable levels in currencies in various of the emerging markets. Okay, and there are fears of an economic slowdown in Asia. This is coupled with a potential banking crisis in China and a potential real estate bubble in China also. How concerned are you about this? Well, the global engine of growth has been China. And so what is happening there is of course very important, irrespective of the good environment that we've had in developed markets during 2013, robust U.S. growth in the third, fourth quarter, um, and a European, Europe-wide um, economies beginning to, you know, contribute as well, prospectively, during 2014. But Chinese growth concerns and levels of leverage and the prospect of a default on a Chinese um, levered loan fund you know, really kind of threw markets for a loop. Um, thankfully, there's been some data points come out to kind of calm things down from China. So it's, it's one of these situations where Chinese growth is a concern and, this, and the signals are mixed and there is a view that there are some issues at work that need to be addressed. The good news with respect to China is that there's a lot of firepower um, stored up if they do need to address these issues, as was evidence with this um, this debt fund that was coming, you know, for maturity, and the Chinese authorities stepped in and made it good. Investors paid in full on time. And there are currency outflows from Turkey and India that have forced their central banks to raise rates to defend their currencies. But do you think that this has stifled growth in these regions? Well, it's, it will, and this is in fact part of the medicine that, um, that has to be doled out. And one of the problems writ large across all of these countries that you've just mentioned is that the authorities, the central banks in each of these situations have been allowing the currency to be too strong, um, coupled with expansionary monetary policy so you've had a, a situation where the currency was too strong and interest rates have been too accommodative and you've had a situation where that's allowed the residents of Turkey, the residents of Argentina, Ukraine, Venezuela, etc., to be buying from outside of the country with a super-powered currency. And, and this is unsustainable and this is a problem. And so the, the moves that we've seen in currencies during this month um, while quite dramatic, are a move in the right direction. Important to come along with an adjustment in the currencies 
is a monetary framework, a fiscal framework, that investors can look at and have confidence in. So this is, this is where there's still some moving, um, you know, moving parts that are, that are coming together, hopefully coming together in some cases, and maybe not going to come together in some, some other cases. Okay, Ian, thank you very much for joining us today. And that's all we have time for for now, but do check back later for further updates and for further interviews from the TV team. Bye for now.